Welcome to the KDB Reviews podcast. You've managed to find episode two of season nine, you lucky people. I'm your host, Andy Davis, and this is a really, really interesting one today as we get a peek behind the curtain at the company that sells more kitchens than anyone else in the UK by a mighty margin, and that's Howden's, of course. Now, as a bit of background, I've been covering this industry now for a frightening 20 years. I know, I know. How is that possible? I look so boyish. And in pretty much all of that time, I've made attempts to get an interview with the senior management of Howdlands with absolutely zero success. That's fair enough. I'm under no illusions. It's the nature of the job. However, clearly, I follow them with interest. And last week saw the release of their half-year results for the six months up to the end of June. And this was accompanied by an online investor conference call with CEO Andrew Livingston. Now, as a listed company, this is all public record, of course. So I listened in and pulled out a few nuggets that show how Howden's is doing, given all the prevailing economic conditions, and some strategic highlights that demonstrate where its focus is and where it sees new opportunities. And, spoiler alert, many of those opportunities are about coming up the market in terms of value. So, just to underline it, this isn't an interview I did with Andrew Livingston. This is all from his presentation of the company's half-year results. But first... Don't forget that you can go back and browse through pretty much all of the previous episodes of the KBB Review podcast by going to kbbreview.com forward slash podcast, however did we come up with that. You can play them right there in the browser, or you'll find direct links to episodes for Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Of course, the other way to browse them is to find the show in your podcast app of choice and follow us there. That means you won't miss any future episodes. Okay, let's start with an overview of how Andrew Livingston, the CEO of Howden's, sees its performance during 2023 so far. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market and there's a lot of numbers in here, but it does paint the picture of how it operates as a business, so it's worth it. The group performed well in the first half of 2023 against record prior comparators and in, as we anticipated, a more challenging marketplace. Sales and profits met our expectations for the period and we are on track for 2023 and we are progressing with our investment program, which is focused on our key capabilities and giving us end to end a stronger business. Group sales rose by around 1.5% on 2022 and increased 42% on 2019, being the year prior to the onset of the pandemic. And we believe we gained market share in the period. Profit in the first half was lower than in 2022, when by historical standards, the first half contributed a significantly higher proportion of annual profit than usual, with first half profits increasing by 86% on 2019 versus a 40% increase in sales. First half profit this year increased by 43% on 2019, around the same rate as sales. We maintained an industry-leading gross margin with gross profit levels with last year's as we balanced recovery of significant input cost rises with our commitment to provide competitive pricing across the board for our customers. Excluding investment in strategic initiatives, active containment of operating costs kept these levels to 2022 despite ongoing inflationary pressures. Our builders remain busy and we made good progress on strategic plans, both for the UK and for our international operations, whose sales continue to increase. The business delivered strong operating cash flow, and we maintained a robust balance sheet. This gives us the flexibility to continue to invest in our growth plans for the business, and at the same time provide shareholders with enhanced cash returns in the form of an increased interim dividend for this year, and a further 50 million share buyback programme which followed on from the previous 250 million programme completed last year. Right at the start of his presentation, it's really interesting that given the scope of the company, one of the topics that featured strongly was the ongoing sustainability journey of Howden's. Perhaps that demonstrates how seriously it takes it as a subject. The Environmental, Social and Governance, or ESG, strategy of a manufacturing company of this scale is watched very closely by investors, particularly pension funds who are being steered more and more by pension holders towards sustainable investments. Our focus remains on direct emissions reduction in our own manufacturing and working closely with suppliers to reduce emissions across our external supply chain, together with accelerating our product and packaging sustainability program. Two significant milestones were reached in the period. We aim to achieve net zero by 2050, having halved our direct emissions by 2030, and we've submitted our net zero plan to SBTI for their approval 12 months ahead of schedule. 
We have also received carbon neutral accreditation for the solid surface factory we acquired in Spaldington, and our factories at Howden's and Runcorn have also been recertified. Okay, so we've established that Howden's is still doing very well despite the market conditions, and its frankly phenomenal growth curve over the last decade or so may wobble at times like this a bit, but it never turns in any direction other than up. So what is the secret? What, as far as Andrew Livingstone is concerned, is the Howden's recipe? And, of course, how do you apply it when the market is tough? A strong product lineup, high stock availability, industry-leading service levels and a very engaged team have all contributed to our performance, which benefits from the ongoing investments in our customer-focused strategic initiatives. In the period, average customer spend matched last year's and we had a record number of customer accounts as at the half-year end. We also increased some prices, which helped us defray most of the impact of significant rises in annualised input costs seen in the period, and to sharpen our prices elsewhere. As well as maintaining an industry-leading gross margin, the business continued to deliver KPI volumes, which in aggregate were well ahead of pre-COVID times. And in the second half to date, overall sales trends have been similar to those in the first half. Given the prevailing macroeconomic circumstances, we're expecting a more challenging marketplace in 2023, and this has proved to be the case so far this year. However, we're prepared for this, and our customers, mainly self-employed people, are adept at managing their businesses through such times. Delivered by our highly entrepreneurial and well-incentivized teams across the business, I believe that our service-orientated trade-only, in-stock and local model is the right one to deliver sustainable market share gains across changing conditions. Our model is hard to replicate and difficult to compete with. And we have initiatives in place to make it more so in markets with significant longer term growth opportunities for us. We continue to prioritise investments in the business on this basis. That's quite simple, really. The model is built on the ability to let small builders drive up to the nearest depot, which is never very far away, and pretty much put a full kitchen in the back of the van and then head off to Mrs Smith's house. That's pretty straightforward, but logistically, it's incredibly impressive when you actually think about it. So the depots, their location, the stock levels and their efficiency is absolutely everything. High service levels, including local proximity and immediate availability, are very important to our customers. And we continue to see profitable opportunities to open depots. We are using our updated format in all depot openings. This enables us to provide the best depot environment in which to work and conduct business and to make space utilization and productivity gains in a cost-effective way by using vertical racking in the warehouse sections of the depot. Overall, we believe there's scope for around 1,000 depots in the UK versus the 808 trading at the end of 2022. We are well planned on depot openings, and we now expect to open around 33 new depots in 2023, having opened eight so far this year. And our pipeline for 2024 is also progressing well. These will include some more in the smaller format size we tested in 2022, using our next day XDC delivery service to supplement in depot stock holdings. The smaller version enables us to open a depot in places lacking suitable properties to accommodate the standard one, or open an infill depot to provide a more local service in less densely populated areas. We have progressed our revamp programme for existing depots. This continues to receive very positive feedback from depot staff and customers alike, and providing such a trading and working environment is important to our competitive position. By the end of 2022, including relocations, we had revamped 185 depots. The revamps are budgeted to pay back costs in less than four years, and depot P&Ls are charged a reformat cost, which ensures depot teams are motivated to deliver incremental sales. As we revamp more of our estate, we are modifying the scale and scope of the revamp at depots with relatively lower catchment areas, so as to maintain incremental returns. In the first half, including relocations, we revamped 28 of the 90 or so depots we are now planning to complete in 2023, 10 more than our previous guidance for the year. By the end of 2023, we expect to have revamped around 41% of the 671 depots 
which opened in the old format, and to have around 53% of all UK depots trading in the updated one. Yeah, just to repeat that, he thinks there's room for a 1,000 depots. What this all really shows is that they understand their customers really well and adapt their model to make life as easy as possible for them all the time. That's just good retailing wherever you sit in the market. The focus on efficiency is also really interesting because for a company at this scale, small changes can make big differences. And there is clearly a constant rolling evaluation of what sells and what doesn't, what is popular and what isn't, and where there may be gaps that can be filled. Managing the number of kitchen ranges efficiently is crucial for both best availability, which is highly valued by our customers, and for profitability. In recent years, we've reorganized our kitchen architecture, removing duplications and improving the balance between new kitchen introductions and timely discontinuations. We've also introduced a more efficient way of testing new kitchen colors and finishes, which we call Find the Gap, which has enabled us to bring more proven new kitchen styles to market more quickly. This year, we have around 90 current ranges in stock and available to UK depots, organised into 10 families. In recent years, we've upgraded our new product programme and sales of new product making a significant contribution to our performance. Total sales of new product introduced in the current and the prior year were at the same levels as in the first half last year, representing around 16% of total UK sales as compared with around 13% in 21 and 2020. Sales of new product introduced in the first half of 22 alone increased by some 95% in 2023. And as in 2022, higher priced kitchens have continued to contribute more of our kitchen mix by volume than previously, which has a positive impact on our average kitchen invoice value. We are committed to providing market-leading and competitively priced product for our customers to sell to theirs. For 2023, we have 23 new kitchen ranges, an enhanced worktop offering, and a reinvigorated lineup with other product categories. Value for money is a consistent feature of purchasers' buying decisions and is likely to be never more so in 2023. Given prevailing pressures and household budgets, and we believe we are well positioned to take advantage of this. For 2023, we've increased the net number of ranges aimed at the entry and the mid-market segments, making more kitchen looks and styles accessible to all budgets. Sales volumes of such kitchens are also a major contributor to keeping our unit costs of manufacture low. We continue to develop our higher priced kitchen offering, which now includes a new paint to order service. This is a large segment of the market, representing 30% plus of total market sales, where we are underrepresented. For our entry ranges, we have added more colour options, including Greenwich in Reed Green, Whitney in Pebble and Navy, and Allendale in Dust Blue. And we have new frontals for Greenwich and Whitney to match the Croft Grey cabinet that we've introduced this year. We've refreshed the look of our best-selling Shaker family, which we have named Halesworth, and added new mid-priced beaded Shaker range, Bridgemere, initially available in three colours. In recent years, introductions of higher-priced kitchens have proved very popular, and in 2023 we've refreshed our offer to these segments, but kept to a similar in-stock range count to last year and the same number of families. New colours for our 2023 include Hockley, both in black and fair green, and Chilcombe in marine blue. And we have easier to fit handleless ranges, a look often associated with the high street independence. For the second half, we've introduced a new paint-to-order service for customers buying our Chilcombe and Elmbridge timber ranges, which represent the top end of our offering. Priced at a premium to the nine range colours available from stock, we are initially offering 15 new paint-to-order colour choices from which customers can opt to have for either all or just part of their kitchen furniture. For buyers looking for a more bespoke look, we believe the paint-to-order service is very competitively priced, with by market standards a short lead time between the order being placed and the kitchen being ready for delivery. 
This constant examination of what sells and what doesn't and where it can plug gaps is perhaps best illustrated by Worktops. Now, back at the start of 2022, Howden's bought solid surface manufacturer Sheridan's. It knew that if it wanted to increase the value of its kitchens, it needed to offer that as part of it. A strategic priority for us is the development of a market-leading supply and fit capability for premium work surfaces. Solid surface worktops are often, but not exclusively, associated with the sale of higher-priced kitchens. And this product category is a growing segment of the market with a significant opportunity for us. Following the acquisition of the Sheridan's worktop business and our other investments, our in-house solid surface manufacturing capability is amongst the largest in the UK. The number of solid surface orders taken by depots has increased significantly in 2023 and we continue to improve our offer. In 2023, we added six more entry-level decors to our solid surface template and fit service. And with the integration of Sheridan largely complete, we are now reducing the time between template and fit to an industry-leading five days. The acquisition of Sheridan's underlines one of its key USPs. It makes most of its own stuff in its own factory and can therefore control the efficiency of that part of the supply chain in the same meticulous way. It's no surprise to learn that they intend to do more of it. We make all the kitchen cabinets and some of our other kitchen product we sell, which is the source of competitive advantage for us in several ways. We keep under review what we believe is best to make or buy balancing the overall supply chain availability, resilience and flexibility. In 2019, investment in manufacturing technology enabled us to make the doors of our popular Hockley kitchen ranges. Since then, we have invested in new lines at our Howden site, which are amongst the most advanced of their type in Europe. These give us the ability to make a variety of kitchen furniture, principally frontals and panels, for more of our ranges at the same quality as we can source externally, but at a lower cost and at a reduced lead time to delivery. Production on the new lines is scaling up and we expect them to manufacture around 750,000 pieces in 2023, with a full scale capacity of around 2 million pieces in subsequent years. Separately, we've also invested in two lines to facilitate our paint to order initiative located in a purpose-built facility near our Howden site. The lines give us an industry-leading production capability in this area. Lastly, our second architrave and skirting line is also now operational, enabling us to service in-house more of the substantial increase in demand that we've seen for these products and for which we are extending our offering in 2023. The use of technology is a big part in all of this too, and the customer-facing element of the business is no different. The company is increasingly looking to customers, the builders remember, to manage their accounts online, and the numbers are pretty staggering actually. In the first half of 2023, 36,000 new accounts were opened, and to put that in perspective, 55% of customers don't have an online account. There's a continuing and increasing focus on using digital to get consumers too. Between the start of January and the end of June, there were 9.5 million visits to the Hound's website, and that'd be a mixture of builders and consumers, of course. And across all channels, it has 480,000 social media followers, and that's up by 11% in the first half of 2023. And it's all working. Unprompted brand awareness with consumers was 25%, more than twice what it was pre-COVID in 2019. Their customers may be builders, but Howden's is targeting the consumer directly by acting like a retailer. To facilitate more high quality leads for depots, we've launched a new process for booking design appointments and increasing the visibility of the booking system on our website. We have also equipped our kitchen designers with an upgraded CAD tool, which features faster rendering, photorealistic imagery, and is easier to use than the previous version. We have more digital content for end users, including kitchen trends and hydens around the home. Features include insights from influencers and product spotlights, and we have given such content more prominence on our website. So what about the near future? Howden's is really solid, but not totally invulnerable to the prevailing market winds. So how does Andrew Livingston see the rest of the year playing out? Howden's has performed well in the first half in as anticipated a more challenging marketplace. Whilst we have peak trading ahead of us, we are confident of our business model across changing market conditions. 
and our expectations for this year are unchanged. We aim to retain a profitable balance between margin and volume as we continue to maintain competitive pricing whilst aligning operating costs and working with suppliers to keep product and input costs controlled. We are mindful of the challenges current macroeconomic conditions, including ongoing inflationary cost pressures, present. And we are trading against record prior year comparators in a market whose overall size, as measured by kitchen volumes, may well see a decline this year. Our customers, mainly self-employed people, are adept at managing their businesses through such times. And in summary, we are well-placed to outperform our competitors again in 2023, as we continue to invest in our key capabilities and growth opportunities, which are vital to the long-term development of the business. So as I said at the beginning, this is all from an investor conference. And at the end of the main presentation, Livingston took some questions from the virtual audience and his assessment of the market continued, particularly with his view on how much the market has fallen back by. Our strong sense is the market is down somewhere between 10 and 15 percent in volume in the first half. You know, it's not a well recorded market, but we take a strong sense from what our key suppliers are doing with us and others in the market and we get a sense from our manager where we're at. That's our best guess, around 10 to 15. So we are definitely picking up significant um, market share versus our competitors. But I suppose as I look into the second half and I think about period 21, we are absolutely on form for it. The lead bank's where it needs to be as we build into the second half. But our product offering and our offering in general is in an excellent place. We've made a position that I spoke about in around making available our top end look at mid end prices. And customers may choose to do different things and go for mid price doors with an invest in solid surface work surface, which we'd see as a theme. Our non kitchen business, our day to day business, you know, flooring, joinery, architraves, all strong with some good volumes coming through. Our open value, not to 2K, buy to let, council housing, all that kind of stuff is very stable. I would say from a share point of view, yeah, we're pleased with what we're doing. We want more. We want more all the time. And we think that will come in the second half. We don't think the competitors are as organized as we are currently. On price, we're always adjusting. You know, we put in for 10. We got sort of five. That sort of felt back to normal levels of what would happen on a price increase. We protected the bottom end on value. On mid, we adjusted. On the top, we adjusted wee bits. But we do that all the time. And remember how it works in Howden's. Our depot managers are the ones empowered to set prices locally for customers. So when I'm going through my regional board meetings through the year, I'm always testing for confidence around price. Through our builder forms, we're testing where we're at with customers. But I think the pricing implementation is, um, you know, we, we feel we're really well set up. And when I mentioned that I went round and did roadshows, we saw every depot manager over the last three weeks, and we're in our process of regional boards, price is not being raised. You know, when it is, we deal with it, but it's not being raised. We think we're, we're well-placed. In fact, uh, one of the managers summarized it beautifully, you know, when we got to the roadshow, the fi- final end of the roadshow, and they said, Andrew, we've, we've done everything we need to do now, business-wise, we've got this for the second half. And finally, market share. Howdens are huge, and it's hard to think of them as anything other than wholly dominant in their sector of the market. The problem with that comes when you're big but need to continue growing. And the only way to do that is to start reaching out of your bit of the market. And for Howdens, that means coming further and further into the arena where most independents operate. Look, on on market share, and this is a guide uh, across good and better and best, you know, we pretty we would dominate the good segment of the market where medium mid market is very important. But with the introduction of, you know, solid doors, solid work servicing, our biggest market share gain would probably be at the better end of the market where you're talking about kitchens in the sort of 8,000 plus category in the mid market. It's four to eight thousand pounds kitchens. And then we consider good anything below four. So, yeah, I, the, the simple high level answer is we've been taking more share at the better end as I think people have been looking to seek better value. There's a lot in it for the trade. When they buy product for us, they can put their markup on it. We do the solid work surface that we're now you're going to be down to five days template and fit, which is industry leading. So I think, I think that's where we're at. 
So there was our little peek into Howden's, and it was so interesting hearing Andrew Livingston speak about the core philosophy, the vision, the strategy. And you know what? It isn't complicated. Understand your customer and shape your entire company around giving them what they want, when they want it, at a fair price, and constantly review it all in case it changes. The execution is the hard part. I haven't really scratched the surface of the other half of this presentation, which was about the logistics of stock and delivery and the significant work and investments they're putting into constantly streamlining all that. I know most independents won't exactly be fans of Howden's, but there's no question that they're arguably the most successful business in the kitchen arena, and we can all learn from their approach in one way or another. That's it for this week. Don't forget to explore all the other episodes of the show by going to kbbreview.com forward slash podcast or searching KBB Review, all one word, in your podcast app of choice. I'll see you next time.